pretty much every day we've had the same ish routine we wake up and eat some kind of breakfast usually a pastry of some sort because i don't think that bacon and eggs is really a thing and some coffee for sure and then we walk for a while see some pretty things stop again for coffee and maybe even lunch walk some more and then stop and then that's really where the work starts because there's like a level of hygiene <laughs> that seems to be expected out here. So we take a shower, wash our clothes, hang them up to dry. And then by that time, it's usually dinner. Gotta make sure we're charging our devices, etc., And then go to bed. On the other trails I've hiked, I used to dream of having a bed to sleep in and, and a shower and real food. But this, uh, this like, bathing and doing laundry every day. I mean, I used to think that I miss things like that, but it's like expected. I mean, I could not do it and make other people suffer, right, with my stench, but I mean, it's like normal out here to do that. So anyway, trade-offs. If you think that in normal backpacking, you would really love to be able to bathe and wash your clothes, you might be surprised to find that there's some kind of convenience and just being able to be stinky and climb up in a tent and go to sleep and not have to worry about those chores. <laughs> so I guess what I'm trying to say is that overall through hiking in the wilderness has just made me a stinky lazy person. We had the option today of doing a five point something mile day or close to 12 mile day. And so we're opting for the five today. We're just not, we're not feeling it. It's one of those, just wanna wake up late. Most of the time you have to be out of albergues at like 9 a.m. at the latest, uh, which is normally fine. But this one we could be out as late as 10.30. So we took advantage of that and instead of stressing over oh is everything gonna be full when we get to the next place in 11 miles because we started pretty late we're just not even gonna stress over it. we're gonna do a five mile day and call it a good day i'm sure they're just practicing their ballroom dancing We made it. We just checked in, and so far we are the only ones in our room. This little room that we've picked is kind of partitioned off with curtains. I like that this hostel has these rubbery like covers over their mattresses. I assume that's to help prevent bed bugs which is awesome. Now the blankets, I assume are just like at hotels. They probably rarely get washed. So I don't ever use these, but you could bring just a sleeping bag liner and probably get by with using these blankets. I just, I'd rather not. So I always throw mine off the bed. And then it looks like, usually I assume when they have pillowcases that the pillowcases do get washed daily if they're used. Um, but sometimes they'll give you like little disposable sheets and pillowcases, which this place actually also does that. I do want to say though, that just because a place has bed bugs doesn't mean that they're a gross hostel. It doesn't take being a nasty hostel to get bed bugs. It takes one person bringing bed bugs from somewhere else to a place. And when you're staying in so many different places with people who have stayed in so many different other places, then it's just kind of a thing that that's supposedly common to happen. Now, with that said, in the Gut Hook app, if I do see a comment that says, hey, this place, you know, I got bed bug bites on me while I was staying there, then, I mean, we're, we're probably going to avoid it if we can. Uh, common sense would say why would we, we would want to, but uh, in general, just because you hear a place has had bed bugs doesn't mean, oh my god, it's disgusting. And I'm sure that these places are used to those things happening, which is why they take these precautions and probably, you know, do 
quick treatment and come in and, and get, get rid of them. So anyway, just a little word on that. It's pretty, this is the view of the neighboring village from the village we're in, outside of our hostel, which is right there, right here. All my dreams came true. <laughs> Get it back. Hard toast just wasn't cutting it. <laughs> You're gonna tear out that pack. All right. No. All right, just pull it straight. Oh, you got the other one out. Oh. <laughs> it hit me. Yay! It's called the the Gimpney Gate. <laughs> I'm about to roll down this hill. <laughs> Do it. No. You won't. <laughs> I'll break my shell. <laughs> well, Tina, I know what you can be for Halloween. A pirate? A grandma! <laughs> oh. Look at the little, little nose. Oh, yeah. Everybody passing today has been saying Buen Camino like normal and I'm thinking Muy Mal Camino because I don't feel good and I uh, I don't know I don't have a fever or anything like that I'm just stuffed up and coughing I have had a little bit of a sore throat and so it could be like an allergies sinus e thing but the only thing is Montana has been like that for a couple days too so I don't know. I don't know if we both just kind of have some crud or if she's got something and gave it to me. Um, but there was a pharmacy in the next little village. There wasn't one where we stayed last night. Plus it was Sunday. So they're closed. Um, hoping to get there before they close for their little afternoon siesta. We're staying tonight in Lagronio because we, we booked it ahead of time since there's a wine festival there. And from what I understand, at this point every day, it's been getting booked up. So I would have gotten us a private room just in case, cause don't need to be having the crud up in a bunk room. It's not really fair to other folks, but now we're kind of in a tight spot. So we will be hand sanitizing and washing our hands and coughing in our sleeve and doing the best we can to kind of stay to ourselves. But yeah, huh. thankfully it's kind of an overcast day. So it's not just scorching hot and miserable because we are doing a little over 11 miles today. This is the, the snail home store. Okay. It's $8 more. Okay, yeah. I gave the translation for a sore throat, stuffy nose, and coughing to the farmer's assistant. He told me, let me see it in English because I don't think the end is translating right. <laughs> and this is what the translation I gave him back 
to English. <laughs> We were trekking on through Viana and uh, we saw in English over to the side, it said Pilgrim's Oasis. We saw this sign listing things that they had for sale that we haven't seen in Spain. And it turns out they're Canadian, the folks that are running the place. They have snacks and um, different foods and they also do foot baths. So uh, I talked Montana into it <laughs> outside of her comfort zone. It's just like refreshing and I don't know, just I had some hummus and vegetables because I've been missing vegetables, something out here, serious. It was a good stop and kind of a, a pick me up that I feel like we both needed since we were kind of blah today. Somehow my math earlier was incorrect. We're actually going 12.2 miles today, which will be our biggest day so far. Entering Lagroño. So Lagroño is one of the bigger places for sure that we've been so far on the Camino. According to this little guidebook that I'm reading, a PDF version, this is one of the cities that has been fought over a lot. And that's why supposedly there aren't as many historical monuments in the early medieval times here, I guess, because they kept, you know, smashing whatever somebody else would rebuild here. but. So that's kind of cool in itself. I'm sure there is a lot of history in this town though, just like in the other ones that we've passed through. I don't like this. Oh. <laughs> no! no. lamest photo booth ever. It didn't even let us make funny faces. And this is why it was lame because <laughs> it's for like passports and stuff. <laughs> it's not a fun photo booth. <laughs> Eating Domino's for dinner. Tastes like home. <laughs> the closest we'll get to home. Yes. <laughs> the menu is even in English. Still in a little homesick, so we got a little taste of it. Pizza for breakfast. And we're about to cross mile 100 in just a minute. It don't get any better than that, does it? No, no, it does not. I am feeling so much better today. And I, I didn't really want to admit it to myself, but you know, I always share the good and the bad with everything, so I'm going to on this trip also. And uh, I think I was getting a little bit homesick on top of actual not feeling well sick. Being submerged in a completely different culture, not being able to communicate well with other people. And the food differences, going places and ordering food that I'm not quite sure what I'm ordering. Having people around every day and, and not getting great sleep because you know people do snore they have different schedules this isn't a normal backpacking trip for me i mean there have been a lot of things that are, are completely different about this good and bad i think that putting ourselves in situations where we're not comfortable and, and as i've said before getting comfortable with being uncomfortable is important all of that to say that i think i I was getting a bit homesick, but I think I've kind of reached a point on that where I'm like, okay, I was getting a little homesick and now it's time to reevaluate and just kind of change my perspective. And I know that there will be a lot of positives that come from that. So anyway, if you've ever experienced that, I feel you. If it's not normal in general, then at least I'm weird with you because that's how I feel.